To begin assembling your PHX, place your case on a level surface, then undo the four latches and lift the lid. Next, remove the first wing from the case, then grab the fuselage and insert the spar joiner through the fuselage. Install the wing by sliding it over the spar joiner and pressing it into the fuselage. Grab the second wing from the bottom of the case, slide it over the spar joiner and press it into the fuselage. Install the wing pins by fully seating the wings and inserting the pins into the guide holes. Set the aircraft down and remove the comms box and its power cable from the case. Bring your comms box to your ground control setup. Connect the comms box via Ethernet to your laptop. Angle the antenna so that it has a clear view of the sky, and insert the power cable to turn the comms box on. If you're going to switch antennas, remove the power cable, then unscrew the small antenna. Grab the large antenna and screw it into place. Appropriately angle the antenna and replace the power cable. To connect the comms box to an iPad, ensure the comms box is powered on. Open the settings app, select Wi-Fi on the left hand side, choose the comms box network when it appears. When prompted, enter the password which is the serial number twice. In this example, the password is 00650065. Press join and confirm the connection. Next, install the battery into the aircraft. Remove the foam hatch and press the battery firmly into the battery bay. Secure the battery using the Velcro straps inside of the battery bay and replace the foam hatch. The aircraft will automatically turn on and will emit several beeps. Return to your ground control setup. Use the laptop to open Fly PHX. Then, wait for the aircraft and the software to connect. The green loading bar at the top of the screen will indicate when the aircraft and the software are connected to each other. You may receive some warning messages that tell you that the mission is not ready when a mission has not yet been planned. Close the boxes and proceed to plan your mission by selecting the Plan tab. For this flight, a pre-planned mission was used. Select Open. A file browser window will then open. Navigate to where the mission is stored, select the mission, then press Open. The mission will appear on your screen. Scale your zoom level so you can see the entire mission and ensure that it is correct. Once you are satisfied, press the upload button in the upper right hand corner and sync the mission with the vehicle. Then return to the fly screen. In the upper left hand corner, press the checklist button and the pre-flight checklist will appear. Refresh if needed. The ground control software will automatically check the sensor health and GPS signal quality for flight readiness. The battery check will be performed automatically by the software. Launching with a battery lower than 90% will be more difficult than launching with a full battery. Verify that the payload is ready. A video stream from the Sentara double 4K camera will appear in the lower left hand corner. This indicates that the camera has started a session and is ready to take photos while in flight. The next two steps are to ensure that your laptop and comms box batteries are sufficiently charged. If either lose power during flight, the lost communication failsafe will trigger and the aircraft will return to land. Also confirm that the comms box antenna has a clear view of the sky that the aircraft will be flying in. The next step is to verify that the propellers have no damage greater than 1mm in size, have light friction, and that the nose cone spins freely. The propeller should stay in place when folded out from the body and easily fold back in upon landing. Over tightening can cause blurry imagery and damage to the propellers. Next, ensure that the wings are securely attached to the aircraft. Do this by grabbing the wing near the tip, turning the aircraft on its side, and giving it a light shake. After both wings have been tested, firmly press both wings into the fuselage one more time to ensure that they are fully seated. 
check that the servos are working correctly by forcing the control surfaces to move. This can be done by rocking the aircraft up and down, rolling left and right, and wiggling back and forth as shown. The aircraft must have a GPS fix and a home point to perform this step. Press the Start Calibration button and block the pitot tube from the wind by cupping the tube with your hands as shown. When prompted, pressurize the tube using your fingers as shown. Check that the aircraft compass calibration is correct by pointing the nose of the aircraft in the cardinal directions east, south, west, and north. The reading of the compass in the upper right hand corner should be within 10 degrees of truth. Return to the plan screen and check that the survey settings have the correct altitude and overlap settings for the type of data you wish to collect. Then, Check that the takeoff and landing areas you have planned are clear of any obstacles and that the landing is planned such that the aircraft lands into the direction of the wind. On days with no wind, opt to throw the aircraft into the direction with the least amount of obstacles in its path. Crosswind landings up to 15 miles an hour are allowed. Tailwind landings are never advised. After those steps are complete, press the upload mission button to apply any changes you may have made. The checklist is now complete. Close the checklist window and prepare for launch. Place your aircraft on level ground and slide the start mission slider. The ground control software will enunciate and display a message box that launch detection is running. Carefully pick up the aircraft and position yourself to throw. Shake the aircraft with the forward motion to start the motor. Then throw the aircraft straight out with wings level into the air. The next portion of the video shows what will be seen on the ground control station during the flight. The screen capture has been sped up for viewing convenience. We first see the aircraft gaining altitude as it travels towards the takeoff waypoint. Next we see the aircraft performing the survey portion of the flight. Once the survey is complete, the aircraft will travel towards the landing loiter. The aircraft will use this loiter to slowly descend to its approach altitude. Once the approach altitude is achieved, the aircraft will continue to loiter until it is aligned with the landing point. Next, the aircraft will begin final approach. During this portion of the flight, the aircraft will continually descend and fly towards the landing point until it is on the ground. The landing abort slider will appear at the bottom of the screen and should be used if anything is wrong during the final approach. The aircraft will touch down on the ground and slide to a stop. Approach the disarmed aircraft, remove the foam hatch, and disconnect the battery. Begin disassembly of the aircraft. First place the comms box back into its slot.
Then, grab the aircraft as shown and remove the wing. Then, flip the aircraft over and remove the other wing. Place the second wing into the bottom of the case. Then remove the spar joiner and place it into the clips. Then, place the fuselage into the case. Place the control rod cover over the metal arm on the tail. Finally, place the other wing into the case. Close the lid and buckle the latches. Thanks for watching. Visit our website at www.centera.com for more information. Contact support for more information about your PHX.